We visit the GIE Expo and learn more about outdoor power equipment than we ever thought possible. Festool doesn't suck, and you can win a Milwaukee backpack vac that does. It's Friday, October 26th, and Scott's sick. Oh, postmenopausal osteoporosis. No, the flu. Oh, yeah, the flu. Hey, who's that guy? I'm Stan the Dirt Monkey, and this is your Cop Tool Weekend Review. Sarah and I both traveled to GIE Expo last week, where we ran into several of our friends and made more than a few new ones. Ego was our first stop, where we found Dan from Tools in Action pretending to be Barnaby. And the real Barnaby finally showed up and walked us through the new commercial line from Ego. We then spent time with Mike at Steel, who was showing off a new modular battery-powered OPE system. And finally, we found time to hang with Stan the Dirt Monkey. You can watch all three interviews in full right here on our Cop Tool channel. I'm a fan. While walking around the aisle of the massive show, we also ran into our friends from OPE Reviews. Tim Johnson, an outdoor power tool expert, was kind enough to show us around. While we often got lost in the excitement, Tim knew exactly where to go and what to see. He shared his top 10 tools of the GIE on his blog this week. So if you couldn't make it to the GIE Expo, you won't want to miss Tim's article on OPEReviews.com. The biggest surprise of the GIE Expo didn't come from any tool manufacturer but from Dan and Sarah at Tools in Action. They were there to announce the winner of an entirely new industry award. Let's see what it is and who won. Thank you guys so much. I am Sarah Listy from ToolsInAction.com. We have an amazing announcement today. We are so excited that Eric Jopp of Tools in Action announced us to be the best tool website, you guys. Woohoo! And there's that. Cool. That sounds about right. Here's hoping next year they have a power tool news show with someone named Sarah in it. We'll at least have a 50-50 chance, right? That sounds like job security to me. Moving on from one show to another, Matt Reisinger of The Build Show attended the Remodeling and Deck Expo and found something he thought we should see. A small company called Stellar Innovation was there showing off a fascinating new flooring system that features real wood that literally snaps into place and pops right back out again when it's needed. As cool as it is, if Spider-Man has taught us anything, it's that with great power comes great and crippling financial responsibility. This time to the tune of $26 a square foot. Seriously. Take a look for yourself at Matt Reisinger on YouTube. If you're settling into your weekend and looking for a cool project to keep you busy, once again, Sarah's got you covered. It's time for Sarah's Project of the Week. Oh, shoot! This is why Scott can't get sick. <sighs> hey! Halloween is just around the corner, which is why there is one single spider web in my studio. We have a very small budget. Every year we are reminded that witches and ghosts are funny, but zombies are no laughing matter. So I found two projects this week that are sure to prepare us for the inevitable zombie apocalypse. First up, Jimmy Daresta submits his own entry into the Dirty Smith Apocalypse Weapon Challenge, crafting a spear with a series of spikes that automatically extend upon impact. Not bad, but I'm more inclined to follow the plans of Bob from I Like to Make Stuff, who builds a working replica of the Billy Club from Daredevil. Now we just need to get him in touch with John Malecki and his version of the Mjolnir. Mjolnir. Whatever. And soon we will have our own real live Avengers. Daredevil isn't an Avenger. Shut up, Rob. Those are my picks of this week. If you have a project that you think I should feature, leave it in the comments below. While Sarah jogs back, we'll head over to Instagram where Toolpig is showing off the new Hitachi turned Metabo HPT 36 volt circ saw that boasts a feature we've never seen on a saw before a silent mode. Well, not entirely silent, the 4000 RPM mode does an admirable job of cutting down on the noise. So you can continue to cut while everyone on the job site asks you why they didn't change the name to Hitabo or Matachi instead. It's Tools Day at RR Buildings. Now that Kyle has settled on a name for his weekly feature, he's moving on to new content. This week, he takes a look at track saws. While he initially focuses on his Makita 36 volt example, he quickly moves on to show us how track saws work and makes a compelling case for its daily use on the job site. While he insists that there are many track saws to consider, including DeWalt, he seems to be a bit biased. Although I feel like we're really heavy on Makita today, and you know, Makita, I'm throwing you a bone, I'm just saying. If you're considering adding a track saw to your toolbox, you can find Kyle's advice on RR Buildings on YouTube. Earlier this week, Mark Spagnolo. Spagnolo! The Wood Whisperer himself took to YouTube this week to review the new Festool CT Cyclone, a $375 attachment for the CT Vac series. 
While the Cyclone does its job of separating the big stuff before it hits your filter, Mark noticed an apparent drop in sucking power when he used it with a larger hose. A quick test with an anemometer reveals a staggering 36% drop in sucking power. Try as I may, I couldn't come up with a single joke here that wouldn't get us banned from YouTube. So let's move on. Mark notes that if you use it with a smaller hose, it sucks just fine. Nice. You can get the whole sword story by visiting the Wood Whisperer on YouTube. How many times have you found yourself on the job needing to cut a bit of metal with no bandsaw in sight? Well, Toolaholic offers a solution this week with the Bosch Portable Bandsaw. He refers to the saw as one of those tools that doesn't see much use, but when you need it, it's gold. And we couldn't agree more. He goes on to note that the single-handed bandsaw causes very little vibration, keeps sparks under control, and leave a very clean cut. Unfortunately, the sound will make your teeth fall out. Okay, that's enough. Ah. You can hear for yourself at Toolhawk on Instagram. And finally this week, we found 16-year-old furniture maker Colson of Colson's Concept posted video on Instagram this week where he used his CNC machine to cut a bow tie repair for a crack in a natural tree slice. As you'd expect, such a mechanical technique brought out the woodworking purist in mass who promptly crucified Olson for using his tool of choice instead of the tools they deem more woodworky. Internet, shh, let people enjoy things. We like your creative use of tools, Olson. Keep it up, bud. We'll be watching. Be sure to follow Colson's Concepts on Instagram. That's it for us this week. This is your last chance to get signed up to win a Milwaukee backpack vac from our friends at Milwaukee and Mechanical Hub. So before you do anything else, head over to coptool.com slash contest and get entered. We start the show every week promptly at noon, but we'll understand if you forget. So click the subscribe button and ring that bell for a reminder. Sarah and I are headed to Stafta this Monday. If you're going to be there, be sure to stop and say hi. If not, we'll see you next Friday. Get better, Scott.